Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Kelsey Banfield, and I am with you today to talk about the program in International Comparative Studies and to run through what is normally done in person but is now being done virtually uh, as our info session. We are going to be covering today a number of things, including what the major is, the major we refer to as International Studies, and what the program is, the program we refer to as the Program in International and Comparative Studies. We'll also be covering what the major requirements are uh, and what is offered other than International Studies in the International Institute. We'll talk a little bit about what that is. We also will be covering funding and internship opportunities offered by the Program in International Comparative Studies, or as we call it for short, PICS. We'll also talk about how to declare the major um, and a few other frequently asked questions as we go along through the presentation. If there's anything that this presentation does not answer for you, I will be sharing contact information for us at the end of the presentation and I welcome you to email your questions to that contact information and or create an appointment virtually with one of our advisors. To get started, I'm going to screen share with you one of the presentations that we've used for our info sessions. Uh, this presentation features a lot of pictures taken by our current um, or former students on their study abroad programs um, and some of their internship experiences. So please look out for those photos as we go through. As I mentioned, we are the Program in International and Comparative Studies, and we host the major and minor in International Studies. All of this is within the College of LSA at the University of Michigan. So if you are thinking about declaring a major or minor, then this is the info session for you. A brief description of what PICS actually is. It's a program that serves as the home for international studies, major and the minor, at the University of Michigan. It also serves as a hub for funding for those students who are a major or minor when they are looking at how to pay for study abroad experiences, internships, or research opportunities that they find. It's also just a general place where students in and outside of LSNA can find a home with their interests in any current global issue or problem. The major is intended for students who are interested in pursuing um, advanced degrees or further education or careers in the fields of things like global public health, uh, government or NGOs, uh, humanitarian uh, organizations, those students interested in things like international business, trade, marketing, um, international law or public policy. It's also a great place for students who are interested in learning and are utilizing uh, languages other than English. Major draws on uh, an, ex yeah, an exhaustive number of disciplines, some of which we have named here. Basically, any discipline that touches on an international or global issue is an area we want students to explore. So disciplines like anthropology, econ, poli-sci, those are all places we'd love to see students investigate uh, what their global issue or problem is. Students could also pursue courses in subjects that are outside of LSNA, things like business or art, um, in some cases even engineering. Um, so we work closely with students to help them um, diversify the disciplines that they include in their major. To hone all of those interests into uh, some type of general theme, we developed four subplans um, that are on the screen in front of you. They help students choose particular coursework uh, and they help direct students in a particular direction. Uh, international security norms and cooperation, 
ISNC as we call it for short, Political Economy and Development, PED, Comparative Culture and Identity, CCI, and Global Environment and Health, GEH. The International Security Norms and Cooperation subplan is our most popular subplan. It has the most students uh, enrolled and declared. This focuses on a lot of different interests. Mostly, uh, we got students in this area interested in human rights or international relations. Also students interested in things like security um, and social movements. Students who are interested in war and peace um often find this is sort of their home uh, within international studies. Political economy and development helps students really think about the global economy and not just how the U.S. interacts with the world, but how different parts of the world interact with one another. Uh, looking at international econ is something that we get a lot of students drawn towards, things like international trade, uh, government budgeting and how that is done differently in different countries and how that affects conversations um, that focus on the economy or political economy uh, worldwide. Comparative culture and identity is one of our broadest subplans. It incorporates a lot of humanities uh, centered courses. Courses on things like comparative belief systems, what nationalism means across the globe, things like journalism and global arts, things like gender studies um, and cultural transmission. This is a great subplan for students who are interested in, in a deep dive into culture and comparative culture. Global Environment and Health is a subplan that tends to attract a lot of students primarily in sort of three different areas. Students who are really interested in environment, maybe even the natural science side of environment. Um, maybe they want to sub supplement their natural science background with a little bit of social science and humanities in actually communicating about uh, the environment. We also get a lot of students in this area who are pre-health, who are working on things like med school prereqs and want something to pair with those prereqs um, that focuses on the social side, things like what's going on in public health globally. Uh, for example, what's happening with epidemics and pandemics. Uh, so students who are interested in those things are often drawn to this major. And things uh, that are sort of a cross between the two, things like sustainability, which really draw um, on both environment and health um, and the interplay between those two things. So for all students across all four subplans, there are a basic set of major requirements. The major has prereqs for all four subplans of our introductory course, International Studies 101, and the fourth term language proficiency of whatever language other than English that you're pursuing as part of our major. That means you could be enrolled in the fourth term of your language. That means you could have tested out the fourth term of your language or in some other capacity reach proficiency, uh, for example, through testing AP results, um, IB credit. And there's a number of different ways to obtain the language proficiency. Once those two things are met, then a student is eligible to declare. Also, for those students interested in political economy and development as a subplan, Econ 101 is also a prereq that needs to be finished for declaration. Of the 34 credits, in the major, four subplan courses are required. So four courses that relate to either PED, ISNC, CCI, or GEH. Those four courses that really focus on what your global or world problem is. In addition to those four courses, you have two courses that are considered core. So 301, which is a topics course, is a large course that covers a very general topic in international studies and allows you to be with many students who major or minor in international studies to talk about that, that sort of large scale topic. National Studies 401 is the opposite. It's gonna be on a more specific topic. 
um, possibly something more modern or current that's happening right now. And it's a smaller class size to allow students to get to know each other, to network, and to make connections before they graduate uh, with other international minded students. One research methods course is required at minimum. Uh, these are courses that come from many different disciplines, from econ, from poli sci, from sociology, from stats, from comparative literature. These are courses that help you investigate quantitatively or qualitatively what your global issue is. Um, this is a really great prep, especially if you plan to go on to further uh, research education in your particular field. One course focusing on your region of language. So that means if you, for fourth and sixth term language, you're pursuing something like Spanish or Italian, this regional course needs to focus specifically on that region where the language is spoke. So for Spanish, it would need to be something like Spain and Western Europe or Latin America. For Italian, again, Italy, Western Europe, uh, it just depends on what your language is and where that reaches. Um, different countries or regions within the world. So that's a minimum of one course. You also are required to complete three approved electives. This is where we really start to have a conversation between advisor or faculty member and the student. This is where you are choosing courses that are specifically an interest to you and that fall in sort of three categories. One being further coursework from your subplan, another being courses related specifically to your region, and three courses that are completed during a study abroad or other opportunities that are international and comparative in themselves. This is where students can really customize what they're trying to say or what they're trying to learn in their major. For the language, this exists outside of the 34 credits. Your language is we expect you to pursue it to the sixth term, what is three years of proficiency as uh, sort of U of M qualifies that. This would be a language other than English, and it's not all languages. There are particular languages that are approved, which you can find on our website. Mostly we try to focus on spoken and modern languages. So if you have questions about the language that you're pursuing, please feel free to reach, reach out to uh, an advisor to figure out how we can uh, get you on track with your language. The minor is something that encompasses international problems in a different way. So still your sixth term of language is required outside of the 18 credits for the minor, but the 18 credits are distributed a little bit differently. There's three basic requirements. One, a thematic emphasis, two, a geographic emphasis, and three, the International Studies 401 seminar. Your thematic emphasis consists of three courses, and this is gonna be something similar to one of our subplans or something more particular. And in the next slide, I'll give you an example of what some students have chosen to uh, put together in the past. Your geographic emphasis is gonna focus on your region of language. And then the 401 topic can be any one of the 401 topics that we offer. This minor in the past has been something that students have added to all different types of LSA majors and also has been something that students in the School of Business have also offered or opted to add to their degree. So no matter where you are on campus, uh, feel free to make an appointment with our advisors and see if this is a minor that works for you. For example, the as I mentioned, the region, language, and theme, or the geographic emphasis and thematic emphasis um, can be specified in a way, um, for example, as this, let's see, fourth student did, they focused on Europe because their uh, language was German and Europe is the region uh, for German, and they focused on gender and sexuality as their thematic topic. So fairly broad, but still not as broad as one of the major subplans. Uh, you could go even uh, further into focus if you felt like you wanted to focus specifically on gender and sexuality of European um, women or of refugees. You can certainly uh, narrow that scope of your theme if you can find the coursework um, or the broad experiences um, 
sufficient for that. In the International Institute within LSNA, International Studies is the most popular major. However, we also offer a number of other majors specific to regions. So if you're interested in International Studies and or you're very interested in a particular region of the world, there may be some opportunities here for you to double major or to singular, uh, pursue a singular major in one of these regions. So Latin America and the Caribbean, the Middle East and North Africa, and Russia, Eastern Europe, and Eurasia. These are three other uh, regions of the world that you can focus on as a major. Some of those are also offered as minors, and specifically, uh, the International Institute focuses on regions, but also on themes or global problems or movements, people groups. So some of these things, if you look at the minors, are highlighted. For example, Islamic studies. It does not require the study of one particular region or even one particular language. Uh, it is encompassing of Islam and the Muslim world. Uh, and so if you have an interest in pursuing um, studies in that area, that is certainly a minor that can be added to, to adding major. International Studies offers an honors plan option for students. Uh, we require a 3.4 overall GPA and a B plus or better grade in International Studies 101. Students go on in their senior year to elect two specific courses to the honors plan, 498 and 499, which are fall and winter term of your senior year, and give you the entire year to focus on research, drafting, peer editing, uh, peer reviewing, and presenting your thesis. So students in the past have used this opportunity to, as an outlet for research that they've been doing uh, as a way to put together a piece of writing um, for future graduate school admissions or students who are just passionate about a particular topic and want to take their undergraduate experience sort of to the next level in doing uh, some research and writing on that topic. International Studies has a designated honors advisor who teaches the course and helps each student in connecting uh, their research and their writing and also um, giving them a cohort of peers. So rather than students writing a thesis sort of in a bubble with just them and their faculty member, International Studies really provides a sort of a home uh, for students to do that work uh, while supporting each other. International Studies also offers academic advising for undergraduates. So in the International Institute's main office, myself and my advising colleague serve as two full-time advisors to meet students um, five days a week, Monday through Friday. Uh, when we're on campus, we have available appointments uh, to meet in person and we have walk-in advising hours. When we are in a remote work situation, we have virtual appointments, in which you can go onto our website and sign up for. Um, you can meet us via phone, via video chat, uh, things like Zoom, BlueJeans, Google Hangouts. We are happy to work with students to meet and talk with them in any uh, format possible. When an appointment is just not possible, you can certainly email questions and concerns to is-advising at umich.edu, which is on your screen right now. And we, we try to monitor that inbox and get back to you within 24 hours, uh, those, those questions submitted there. This is a fairly unique situation uh, for LSA departments. Not all departments have the advising capacity, uh, and that is really driven by the fact that we have anywhere from four to 600 students that we are serving interested in international studies and other II programs. Um, so we try to be there um, in any capacity that students need. As I mentioned, my name is Kelsey Banfield and my colleague right now is Rachel Wright. We are the two full-time advisors in the program in international and comparative studies. Our program coordinator, Brenna Warner, is the person that you will normally hear from via email or see updates from on our website uh, or through our blog. Uh, Brenna is 
fantastic, uh, and an alumni of our program. So she is definitely a resource for students. So if you'd like to reach out with, to her with any questions about the events that we're having, the newsletters we send out, or anything going on, on the website, she'd be more than happy to, to talk to you about those things. And also she's great to consult on when you really wanna know what is it like to be an international studies student. She is a member of a staff who can really speak to, to that. Our manager, Natasha, and director, Dr. Franzis, are also both very active, hands-on um, administrators of our program. Natasha does a great job making sure that all of our students are included and considered for things like funding opportunities. And our director is someone who's always willing to talk to students about things, big questions, like what's the difference between international studies and international relations here at U of M? Um, is something international? Is something comparative? Uh, those are all great questions um, that Dr. Francis has a great philosophy on. So he's also a resource for our students. When you declare, there are a number of things that we've put together to support our cohorts of students. Free t-shirts and swag, which is always really fun. Uh, and also a weekly newsletter that goes out typically on Wednesdays. It's a, just a digest and download of everything that we've been made aware of that's happening on campus that is international uh, and comparative studies related. So we try to really narrow down that information so we're not spamming you with things that are not applicable, but we actually try to get the information that's most uh, tightly connected to your interests to your inbox. We have an information blog, which is on the front page of our website, where we post things that may not make it into the newsletter. So random opportunities or one-off things that come to our inboxes from outside organizations or things that may just closely be related but not directly related um, to what our students are studying. So if you're looking for um, some different opportunities, that's a place um, to connect with those. We also offer a, a very active LinkedIn community with our current students and alumni. It's a place I direct a lot of students to when they're thinking about what is it can I do with international studies and who out there in the US and the world is in my field who may be an alumni. Uh, so that is something I, I really encourage students to check. Once you've been declared, we'll allow you access to that site. Every year we also host the annual International Studies Alumni Career Panel, which is another opportunity to talk with alumni about what they did as undergrads in international studies, what kind of opportunities were waiting for them when they graduated, and what they've done with their career over the years. We have a number of student organizations which are on our website, and we have a number every year of luncheons or meetups that we give preference to international studies students to attend. So when we have a predominant speaker come in, uh, we try to arrange a lunch or a meetup session where our students can get um, an actual in-person conversation um, rather than just access to a lecture. We also provide a number of things uh, for funding, which I'm going to get to here in a minute. So our funding is for declared majors and minors who are pursuing things like study abroad, internship, or research. Those are opportunities for the most part that students are finding on their own and then bringing to us um, as a way to uh, ask for funding. So if you have a study abroad opportunity, internship or research that fits our criteria, we do our best to make sure to support you monetarily in some capacity. Uh, the International Institute, which is the institute in which PICS is housed, also has similar internship and research grants. So there are sort of two places students uh, declared in the major and minor can uh, apply to for funding. And we also offer internships in sort of one part of the world that doesn't really fit into a particular region. Um, the and uh, our funding also extends to uh, programs and internships that we actually have in-house. So the Korea Michigan Fellowship is one of those things that exists within the International Institute. Um, and we help students 
fund their, their research through a particular program uh, in Korea. Other student funding opportunities fall underneath these specific fellowship opportunities that we offer. So International Human Rights, the Human Rights First Fellowship, and the Human Trafficking or Social Justice Law Clinic Fellowship. All three are fellowships um, and positions that we offer in-house and then the students compete for and are able to be placed in and receive funding for. I recommend visiting our website as these funding opportunities and internship placements change frequently, um, but these are really good examples of what we're offering at the moment. So this is the contact information that I mentioned. We are located at 500 Church Street on campus in Weiser Hall. So you can visit us up on the third floor. Our offices span the third floor. So depending on who you're looking for, there'll be um, some searching to do. Uh, but virtually, you can certainly contact us uh, via email. And you can learn more about our program on our website. So questions uh, is something I'm always willing to do is answer questions for prospective students, students looking to declare, current students, alumni. If there's something that I missed in this presentation that you still need, I recommend, again, sending us an email or setting up an appointment. That appointment can be a quick five minute, it can be a 30 minute lengthy conversation. Uh, Rachel and I are here to meet with anybody who needs um, questions answered. So if we're declaring the major at this point in time, the best sort of step-by-step -step process to follow is to first make sure that you've completed all of the prerequisite requirements. So that would be your International Studies 101, Econ 101 if it's applicable for PED majors, and then your fourth term of language. That should either be completed or should, should be enrolled in fourth term. Once you've completed 101 and those specific requirements, then you're either eligible to declare. And those declaration forms are on our website. If you navigate to our major page and then choose the subpan you're interested in, that subpan page will hold the link for your PDF uh, declaration form. Once you've filled out the declaration form, you can send that to us via email. Also, you can make an appointment with us. I recommend that every student who is at the point of declaring uh, make an appointment so that we can go over any questions you have about prerequisites and get a sense of where you're at in the major already. Some students have already taken major coursework by the time they're ready to declare, so it's a good idea that we run through um, where you're at um, and what your plans are for the upcoming semester. Advising for international studies usually entails students coming in to Rachel and I about uh, one to two times per semester, so it's a self driven, self-developed major. So students are going to be in constant conversation with us, um, talking about how they build and mold um, their academics. Um, let's see. Is there any other questions? Please send them via email. Uh, otherwise, I hope that this has been informational and I look forward to meeting all of you new and prospective students. Thank you.